think it's metaphoric. <laughs> it's like a corner of the park. Am I being filmed? Uh, yeah, so this, what we do is we discuss, we have dif discussions and then we put it on YouTube. Okay. This is mainly for educational purposes. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Speaker's Corner is freedom of speech. It's something that, um, what this corner is known for. So you can talk about any topic, ask any questions, discuss anything. We normally come here to discuss Islam because we are Muslims and we want to proclaim the message of Islam, something not what you hear on media. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the truth of Islam rather than the twisted version of it on the media and What's other places. Hashim. Hashim. Probably. You are? Maximilian. Maximilian. Nice name. So Max, what is the question? You had a question earlier? Uh, what is your favorite film? What's my favorite film? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was your question earlier. <laughs> No, my question is, I guess, I'm curious. Yeah. He said what I learned from here. Yeah, what was like, he shouting about? No, no, because uh, this is the first time I've come here. Yeah. And I literally just walked over here. I didn't plan to come here. I, I know, was, I know. So I just walk around and I see people talking to each other. Yeah. But I think they're talking at each other and they're yeah. not listening. And I'm curious, my first question is... I hope you're talking to each other. I think we're with, <laughs> with each other. Like, that's good, yeah, that's um, good. That's what we want. There's no point talking over each other or past each other. Um, so my first question is, yeah. does everyone come here with an agenda or do people um, experience something new and grow? Do you find yourself growing as a human being here? Yeah, yeah, what definitely. do you learn about humanity? Definitely. Like um, every person who comes here and who has a discussion, we, have, we understand their point of view and we hope we, we try to make them understand our point of view yeah, yeah. Uh, without imposing it, without any coercion. So we want them, like I said, to know the truth about Islam, what Islam really is about. And we want to show also at the same time and understand what they believe. Like if I'm talking to an atheist or an agnostic or a Christian or even a Hindu, I want to know what's their perspective and where we can have some commonality between us yeah, yeah. and then build on that, inshallah, which has oh. been God willing. So what, what is your background? I don't know. I said I'm a Muslim. Uh, what is your background? Uh, I'm a human on this planet. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm a human. I'd be very worried if I'm talking to someone other than a human no, right no. now. Um, I'm, I'm an actor. Oh, um, interesting. And Anyone I know? Famous? I, don't uh, know. <laughs> I was in a Bollywood film, actually. Which one? Uh, it's called 83. It's a cricket film. Okay, what was it called? 83. 83? Yeah, yeah. Um, so no, my background is uh, I'm an actor. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, just uh, my objective is to live life as fully as possible. Okay. Uh, beyond that, I what, don't... what does that mean to you? Live life to its full potential? I think that means uh, curiosity, exploration, meeting people. Yeah. Like, I think if being curious is about being open to change, mm -hmm. and I try not to have any firm beliefs, so I allow myself to okay. pick up new stuff. Interesting. Uh, so have you asked yourself like any philosophical questions that you don't have an answer for yet? Um, any philosophical questions? Um, I don't think so. Like, sure? I, like I've, I try to read quite widely, I guess. Okay. Um, so if I were to ask you, I mean, in brief, tell me what you think is the purpose of your existence. The purpose quite of existence. Quite philosophical, I guess. <laughs> Uh, well, the purpose of I life guess for if I was sceptical, yeah. I'm not necessarily am, I would say there is no purpose. Uh, but I think our purpose is to, is to live, is to, to create, to find joy okay. uh, as, as human beings. I think that's what our purpose so how, is. How does it differ from, say, the animal world? They want to live, they want to procreate, I'm sure they want to be happy as well. Yeah, so I, how, how do we differ from the animal world? As I, humans, I mean, surely yeah, yeah. Well, we are I, not the same. Are, are, are well, we? I don't think it's good to differentiate between us and animals too much because that's a bit egotistical. I hope but, you don't treat your kids like animals. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I try to treat animals with equal respect because I, like, I'm a vegan. I don't believe in eating or killing animals. No, I, but that doesn't mean... When you say respect, I mean, I don't know what you mean by that, but you do not hold them to the same standards as as human beings do. Uh, Have you got pets? No. You don't? No. Okay, let's say you found a stray cat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Would you treat it the same way as you would treat, say, a, say you found a child wandering around by itself, by himself or herself, yeah? 
Would you treat the child and the stray animal and the stray child the same? Or would you value the child over the animal? No, I think I'd have more, I have more commonality with human beings. Like, Is that it? I'm talking in terms of value. Yeah. In terms of value, would you see them both the same? Okay, I see your point. Yeah. If I see a mosquito or a child, I'm going to value the child more because okay. I have more empathy with them because they're more like me. Right. But like your, per your original question was... That's why I gave the example of a cat or a dog rather than a mosquito because, you know, mosquitoes are more insignificant than ah, these higher... Well, but are they? They are. Why? They are because... Why? Okay, would you would you cry over a mosquito dying compared to a cat, your cat dying? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Have you known anyone who has got pest, pet mosquitoes? No, I don't. Exactly. No, no, no. You see, there is a there's a reason for that yeah. because people give different value to different beings based on whether like you, I, this is my point. Like yeah. I think people they treasure and value things that they consider the most like them. So I think what's your heritage, your community? Uh, so I'm from my background is from India. So yeah. I would think that Indians would have more empathy and love for an Indian before someone from, let's say, South America. Yeah. So I'm not comparing humans to humans. Mm. That's the reason I asked you about the animal kingdom. Because obviously humans have similar value, in my eyes, that all humans yeah. are equal. Yeah. Yep. Now, how you treat them, might, you might have certain biases, okay? And that's fair, I think, yeah? I might like, the, I might like to eat uh, Indian food more than say Italian food. Really? Yeah. Well, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know the variety in Indian food is. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's what's the main food of England? Do you know? That is a very good question. What's the main <laughs> food of England? Fish and chips, isn't it? No, it's not. Yeah. You'll, uh, you'll be surprised. It's actually Indian. It's probably Indian. It's probably yes. a. a um, yeah, it's not Italian. No, it's a. Uh, Vindaloo, maybe. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a type of curry. It's a classic. Well, uh, uh, masala, chicken tikka masala. Chicken tikka masala, masala yeah. yeah. It's masala. Yeah, chicken tikka masala. You're, you're right, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So different people give yeah. different value. But as far as humans are concerned, I think more or less, they, I think most people would value other human beings equally. But that's the reason I gave you the contrast between the animal world and our world. So just like the animals want to live, they want to procreate, and they want to be happy as well, and one day they will die. So what's the difference between us who have got rationality, who, are, who we are able to reason like the way we are doing now, compared to the animal kingdom? Because the animals, they don't have libraries, they don't have civilization, yes? You won't find them building um, skyscrapers and um, living in air-conditioned houses and all. Termites you see what I mean? skyscrapers and live in air-conditioned houses. Yeah, but to that standard, obviously. Yeah, but that's still like... <laughs> yeah, I know. That is, so they want to remain happy as well. That's what I'm saying. But obviously not the same level as the human beings. Okay, so that's can... the reason I'm saying when you have a baby and when you have an animal, or let's say, um, you will not give the same value. So if I were to ask you, um, there's a sinking boat and you have got uh, only the opportunity to save one other being. And you have got the option between, let's say, a dog and a human child. Mm. What would be your choice? I have, of course, the human child. Yeah. Yeah, See, yeah. this is what I mean by value. Okay. So as humans, we value our own species more. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's natural. Okay. But your so question was, my question was, what was the purpose? Was, no, your question was, what's the difference between yeah. animals? And my answer to that... That was based on your answer. But my original was, question was, original question. what is the your, what existence. is the purpose of existence? Yeah. Do, and do you agree with my answer? No, I don't. I said. Uh, you, I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. No, no. I said your answer is no, no different to what. If I, if animals could talk, they probably say the same thing. Really? Yeah. Because they all want to live. They all want to procreate. They all want to ha be happy. So how do we differ from the animals? That was my question. Do we need to? Based on that. Well, we do. I think we because Why? we have certain faculties of reasoning which the animals don't. But that's also a prison because if you can't answer your own logic, then you'll suffer. Yeah, but... And you're assuming we're different to animals. No, possibly. no. When you say, at least we have the luxury of reasoning, yeah. they don't. Yeah? So for them, it's more, mostly like... It's, it's, it's basically what they live in their environment and that's all they have. Yes? We can actually go... So we can have a fridge, we can store our food. Yes? Mm -hmm. They might not have that luxury. Yes, so we can also be the same as the animals. We are different in a way. So in we, way. our purpose should also be different because of the extra, what do you say, faculties of reasoning, the extra um, 
what do you say, the, the way we see life, the way we, the way we value other life, it's, it's different in a different ways. So I think, I think that's an assumption though. How? Because you're saying that if human beings are different to animals, yeah. therefore we must have a different purpose and destiny. Whereas my point is, question one, how do we know we're at different, like on a, I guess, uh, an existential level? I think we're more intelligent and we're more creative, but animals are intelligent and animals are also creative. Can the reason, like the way you do? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that just because I'm intelligent and I'm able to make logic and form arguments and ask questions, that doesn't mean I must have a purpose. That's an assumption rather than a fact. No, I'm saying everything has purpose. I'm not saying animals don't have purpose. I never said that. So what's the purpose? So the animals do have purpose. So every animal out there has a purpose. Okay? We have a purpose as well. I mean, your every organ in your body has a purpose. Yes? Your eye ha has a purpose. So why can't we as human beings have a purpose as well? I don't think we need to. I, don't, I think you're overthinking life. No, I'm not. I think we should have an objective in life. Why? Okay, when you when you are acting, yeah. yes, it's a project, right? Yeah, yeah. Your whatever film you're you're, you're working on is yeah, a project. Yeah. It starts with an objective. Yeah. Yes. Either to let's say make money, make it a box office hit. No, no. Uh, I, I, your point, I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. So what I'm saying, everything yeah. has a purpose and an objective. No, no, if you're going to lead, if you're going to live life without, everything. I think. It's not everything has a purpose. I think you're Name saying, me something that doesn't no, no, no. have a purpose. You're saying, yeah, I think it helps humans to have a purpose yeah. because otherwise they'll get consumed by existential angst and they'll feel no fulfillment in life and they'll suffer. I think we need purpose because we have yeah. intellectual faculties and intelligence. A guinea pig doesn't need to have a purpose like Elon Musk does. It doesn't need exactly. to Exactly, their purpose is not the same as yours. Yeah, yeah. But like you said correctly, every, no, no, everything point, has purpose. It helps us with life, but we don't need one. Like we're not born to have a purpose. No, obviously you're not born with somebody saying, okay, this is your purpose. As you grow older, then you realize that you can't live a life without an objective aimlessly. I agree. Yeah, I so agree. It's, it's like a rudderless boat. Yeah, yeah I agree. It, it will just go aimlessly nowhere. So in order for you to have any meaning to your life, yeah. you need a purpose. So this is what it's about, meaning. Exactly. So what's your purpose in life, generally? So, okay, as a Muslim, yeah, yeah. I will say that my purpose in life is being given to me in the Quran. So I, I, I actually lead my life based on that. So in the Quran, Allah says that you have been created, you have not been created except for the worship of Allah. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean I just stand in front of God and just uh, pay adoration to God or go to the mosque and pray five times a day and that's it. No, worship means obedience to God. So there are commands like prohibitions and like the do's and the don'ts in our religion. And this is something that we as Muslims have to abide by. This, so God has told us our purpose in life. For example, for me to treat my neighbor in a good way, yes, is one of the ways I can worship God because it's, it's obedience to yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. So one of the... Uh, sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu is if anyone who goes to bed uh, with his stomach full and his neighbor is hungry then he is not from the deen, he's not yeah, yeah. one of us. So it's, it's kind of good morals mostly and this is I think not only in Islam in all the religions. No, it's the human life. Exactly, yeah. Because if you don't do that yeah. then... So would you, would you say the greatest purpose is to help other human beings? Yes, absolutely, yes. So if, if I've got good news, which helps me, then I'm going to share it with you. So what good news do you have in your life? Islam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, no, no, but because, okay, but what makes you different from this guy or this guy? Like, so we, what, no, we, what, what's unique, what's unique to you? Like, why do you exist versus this person or that? Like, okay. what inspires you about life? So I'm it, curious. Individually, yeah. we, we are unique, of course, yeah. and we, we express or we, we obey God in different ways. But the aim and the objective is the same. That you abide by the do's and the don'ts God has told you. And once you have done that, then you are successful. Okay? So for us, we believe that everyone dies. And I'm sure you believe it as well. That one day we will die. We believe that this life is a test. And as we grow older, we learn that everything has a meaning. Everything has a purpose. Yeah. And we have a purpose. So this life, which is a test, this is going to end one day. 
And after we die, there's going to be an eternal life. And that is the real life that we should work towards. And how do we work towards that? By being good in this life, yes? And by obeying God, okay? And so, so for example, I don't know if you're an agnostic or atheist, I don't know where you stand, but you also believe that you're going to die one day. Have you ever given thought to after, after you li uh, die, what's going to happen? Do you believe in life after that? Uh, or given any thought to it? Of course, I don't have, I remain curious. Yeah, I figured like just live the best life, be kind, try and leave the world in a better state. Yeah. Um, but how do you define that? How do you define, for example, you know, good and evil, good and bad can be subjective, right? What might be good yeah, yeah. for you might not be good for someone else. Or what might be bad or evil for you might be good for someone else. Yeah, yeah. So how do you get around that problem? I think... Between what is subjective and what is objective. I think human beings have a natural compass of morality. Based on their conditioning, they'll be able to tell what's good and bad. Like, I think like evil is like a total absence of morality, and good is being loving. And I think if you like, treat other human beings with a loving, open heart, as much as possible, rather than being in your own world with your egocentric universe, then no matter whether you're a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Muslim, you know, uh, or an agnostic, I think that's enough. No, but you, there will be conflicts, right? For example, yeah, I'll, gi I'll give an example. Many people think that uh, drinking is good. They feel happy. Yeah, yeah. Yes? I, as a Muslim, say no, it's bad for you. Yeah. Okay, not only for your health, for your mind, and it's also bad for some other person that you might harm because of your drinking. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So how do you get around those conflicts, things like that? I don't know. I think non-judgment is a good place to start to replace curiosity, uh, judgment curiosity. I think like drinking is one example, but there are other forms of addiction like sex, oh, yeah, yeah. work, yeah. Uh, smoking, sugar, Drugs. breakfast cereal. I'm addicted to Cocoa Pops. Yeah. It's like, how, you know, um, so I mean, I, look, we, we have to re be realistic. Eating Cocoa Pops, okay, sugar, I think, yeah? Yeah. Bad for you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, depending if you got diabetes, very bad for you then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is something again subjective, isn't it? Like for some people, cocoa pops might be good. For others, it's not. For some people, alcohol is good based on their own judgment. Yes, whether you are, whether they consider you to be judgmental or not, that's not. That's not what we are talking about. We are talking about the objective truth. So there has I been. Think, can I say something? Yeah, sure. I think like with with all these things, like. Even if you don't drink alcohol, Muslims, like any form of behavior where you do something to run away from contact with yourself, a form of escape is addiction. Like gambling, uh, yeah, I like, agree. you know, all these things. Yeah. So I don't think like the example... But is that good or bad? That's, that's the question. I don't think you need to label it. Why like, not? Because... If it harms your body, if it harms you as an individual, if it harms your family, why is that, that not bad? Because to me, anyone who who harms, like you said earlier, yeah, yeah. as long as they are loving and all that, that's fine. But then you have to look at the harm factor. Is there any harm yeah, in yeah. there as well? Ah, well, if you do harm to yourself or you do harm to other people, then I would say it's not good. Yeah. So I would agree. We've agreed. So so yeah. anyone who drinks alcohol is capable of that, right? The harm. Uh, is anyone... I'm not saying everyone, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But I'm saying there is... Because you're already um, not only becoming addicted, I don't think everyone who drinks alcohol is addicted to it. No, no. But when they are drunk, yes, then the state of mind is not the same as when they are sober. But a human when they're angry is not in the state of mind when they're relaxed. I totally agree. So it's like, That's why I'm not going to treat every emotion the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So when you talk about love, okay, a person who is drunk can be loving. Yeah, yeah. But he can also be harmful while driving and Potentially like taking the life of someone completely yeah. innocent. Maybe someone who doesn't drink alcohol like me, you know? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, why do you, why does someone need to drink alcohol first and foremost, if they know the harmful effects of it? That's a good question. Why would someone, uh, let's take a YouTuber for example, if you want to have a successful YouTube career, yeah. you need to work for like five years hustling. You need to produce a video maybe three times a week. The amount of ambition and work and drive you need to have 
it destroys your body, it isolates you. Like, are you a YouTuber? No, no, I'm not. But How I would you that. know? No, no, but I've talked to them. I, like, I'm a bit of a YouTuber. I've no, got no, my but, channel called like, Dawawise. My point is that <laughs> you, you use alcohol, I like, assume because it's forbidden in the Quran, but yeah. my point is that there are other things which human beings do day to day which do damage to us. Like, no, look, that aren't just I, as extreme. Look, I totally agree with that, yeah. but anyone who damages or harms themselves or other people, then yes, I would say don't do that. So anything you do, in ext uh, for example, if you're going to be become some sort of, um, I don't know what kind of YouTuber we're talking about, but if they are going to extreme lengths where they neglect themselves and their own families, yeah, yeah. then that's, that's wrong. I agree. Okay, eating too much sugar is wrong. I agree. Eating too much fat is wrong. All these things, if you do it in, uh, uh, like if you, if you go beyond moderation, then that is bad. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you're aware that recently there has been study on the harmful effects of alcohol and they have come to a conclusion. This was a huge study over five or six years. And this was published in a medical journal called The Lancet. Yes, so it's, it's peer reviewed and quite serious study. And they said even a, that no amount of alcohol is good. That was their conclusion. So this is an objective study. So it's not just on my feeling or your feeling or some subjective uh, understanding of an individual. It is an objective study through scientific methods. Yes, and this is the conclusion they came to. And this is exactly what the Quran says. The Quran says that there might be some good in it, but the harm outweighs the good. Yeah, yeah. Yes? So, the way the Quran actually prohibited alcohol was in stages. So, at, at first, this was the command that there is some good in it, but the harm outweighs the good. Second, is, uh, uh, Allah says not to come to prayer while you're drunk, while you're in a state of intoxication. The, yes? the Muslims do that? Well, uh, before it became prohibited, they used to drink, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. So alcohol wasn't always like prohibited. It became prohibited during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the revelation of the Quran came over several years. Mm. wasn't in one go, over a period of 23 years. So yeah, just like anyone who wants to wean out, wean away the uh, intoxicants from your, from the, the intoxicating habits, like drugs or alcohol, they don't go cold turkey overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they wean them off gradually. Similarly, this is the, what do you say, the hikmah, the wisdom in the Quran, that it was gradually prohibited rather than in one go. I mean, Allah could have said from tonight, no drinking, that's it. <laughs> but with the wisdom of Allah and the way it was uh, prohibited was in stages. And the last stage, so first, there's some good in it, but the harm outweighs the good. Yeah, yeah. Second, don't come near prayers. And the third, stop drinking alcohol. It's prohibited. Yeah, so that was the final stage. And after that, then they stop drinking. I'm not saying there are no Muslims out there who don't drink. Of course, there will be obedience and there will be disobedience as well. But our aim in life is to be as obedient as possible. Because look, everything in the Quran that has been prohibited, it is something which impacts you individually, or your family, or your community as a whole. What, um, what other things would you say to people who don't know very much about Islam that are prohibited? That very good question. People don't know about. Yeah. So drinking is one. Drinking, gambling, gambling, yeah. Adultery, fornication, uh, oppression. Fornication. Yes. What so do you mean? Anything extramarital. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So if you're not married, you're not allowed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not. Oh, I'm married. I'm not married. So, yeah, fornication, adultery, um, prohibition, uh, uh, prohibitions like uh, unjust wars, uh, oppression, um, what else? Can I ask you a question? So all these things are bad for you, basically. I'm sure you want, uh, you, you, you will object, you want object to any of this being prohibited, right? This is something what all human beings with their moral compass would say is wrong. Can you go through them again? Okay, uh, alcohol, gambling, uh, adultery, fornication, interest, uh, interest, interest. Usually, yeah. Interest. Yeah. What do you mean, interest? Like the banks charging you interest. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with that. <laughs> Can that be <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes. Uh, oppression, unjust wars, all the things. Yeah, I mean. Which one would you say should not be prohibited from this list? Uh, oh, by the way, this is only a subset. There's no, lots no, more. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, the interest in the banks. Yeah. I believe that should be prohibited. No, no, I asked you which should not be prohibited. Which from should this not list. be prohibited? I don't think you should prohibit 
Any of them. So you shouldn't prohibit any of them. You you did agree with usury, with interest. I, I no, I agree with that one. But the other ones, I think there's something. If you were to say, are you like, married? Brother? No. So you don't have children. No. Okay. If you were married and you had children, would you allow them to drink? There'd be occasions where I would think that was appropriate based on my culture and upbringing. Okay, why only occasionally? Because a child's not responsible enough and they could, it could lead to a slippery slope. But, for okay. example, like... To me, a 17-year-old is a child. I mean, based on the NHS definition. Would you let a 17-year-old... I would let anyone. No. Not even you. <laughs> so if my child was as old as you, yeah, yeah. yes, then I wouldn't let it either. What about smoking? Same thing again, it harms your body. Are Muslims allowed to smoke? Uh, no, actually. Anything that harms your body is prohibited. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so but I'm not saying Muslims don't smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Like I said, they can disobey because they are free will. I'm curious about like why people drink alcohol, for example. And I think, have you, have you asked yourself why people drink alcohol? Actually, like, that was... Different tribes and... That societies. was the reason for me to ask that but question what's your, to what's you. Your answer? Why do you think people... Like, everyone I think does pe something for a reason. You know, do you know why? You know, um, human tendency is... If you prohibit them from something, they'll do it. They would want to do it. Yeah. That's that's human nature, you know? Yeah. So for example, even though they know it harms you, it harms your body, I don't know, there's some uh, intrinsic nature that we have that sinning is easy, to abide by the laws is difficult. When I say sinning, I mean going against or being disobedient yeah, yeah. is easier. And also tendency. Same thing with children, you know? They would, if there were no, if there was no one watching them, then they would do or disobey, they would do the wrong. For example, why do we have traffic uh, speeding cameras? Yeah? Yeah, yeah? If they were not there, people will speed. But, for, uh, but if they were there, then they would less likely speed. Not that it will completely stop people speeding. So who cares? You know, if they're rich, they'll pay a lot of tickets, maybe. But in Germany, they don't have a speed limit. I think they do now. <laughs> they do now, yeah. Oh, really? They change their... Oh, they, they finally changed it. That's yes. So... This is something like, look, even in Germany, I think there is, it's only the uh, Autobahn, which didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. The other places, they, they had speeding limits. Yeah, yeah. So it's only certain places. And like I said, this is human nature. If someone is not observing you, someone is not watching over you, then they, are, they will most likely commit offenses, most likely commit crimes, most likely sin. And that is the reason, this is what religion does to you. You voluntarily- I don't know if I agree with your statement. Which one? That, that I think if they. You're, if you're if you're unobserved, you're more likely to do the the wrong thing. I. They did studies on this, you know. Really? They actually experimented on this. But my experience, just I, regardless of your research, or yeah. I guess my own experience is that. You never stole cookies from <laughs> from your mom when um, you were young. <laughs> she did not. She made her, or cook, chocolates. her cookies are really bad. Oh dear. Um, no, I, I hope she's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I think. There's something like... Is there anything that you did when you were a child which you were not supposed to? Especially when your parents were not watching? Yeah, I, w I would say stealing sweets from the sweet shop, like one or two here or not there. Not shop, from your home? Oh. Like, have I'm you... I'm sure, I'm sure, of course. Okay, yeah. so let's ask yourself that question. Based on your own experience, would you have done that if your parents were observing you? No. So there you go. So this is what it is, it's human nature to do things wrong naturally unless someone was observing them. I don't know if it's human nature. It is. No, no, it's a choice. Because for example now as an adult, there are situations where I'm in this as an adult. There's no one looking around. Yeah. For example, I found someone's wallet the other day. Yeah. There was 40 pounds in it. Or a girl I'm dating, you yeah. know, she left a wallet of mine, there's 50 pounds in it. Yeah. You know, they're not going to notice if I take it away. So there's something beautiful about life that I have the choice. I'm faced with a moral decision rather than uh, like obedience, I have to. Like every single moment, I'm given a choice. The same with alcohol. The other day I played poker, you know. Oh dear. And no, no, but uh, <laughs> it, it was kind of useful because yeah. we had a friend who's Muslim who came and we couldn't play with money. So we played with... Okay, so that's not gambling, then, if it's not with money. No, 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 we just played with chips. Yeah, I wanted that's to that's different. It. So gambling obviously is, is another form of addiction people yeah. have and it destroys families. Yeah. yeah, alcohol does the same thing. It destroys families. Yeah, yeah. Many of the divorces, you know, go to the divorce uh, lawyers, they love people who drink alcohol because yeah, it brings yeah. a lo lot of revenue for them. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing with the government. Yes, they charge a lot of taxes on your drinks. 
So they are making a lot of money. That's the reason they portray these advertisements all the time on television and newspapers. Yeah. Okay, because they get, they know it is harmful for the public, but because they're getting revenue from it, they are making the most of it. But when Christmas comes, don't drink and drive. And yeah. within a few minutes, they show you an advertisement for champagne or for beer yeah. or something like that. So this is the hypocrisy or the double standards of our communities and our governments yeah. that I'm trying to tell you. No, no, okay? I, 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 I agree with you. I just don't think yeah. a, a hard ban would work because like prohibition in America, that was a disaster. Like, That's because, like I said, they, like, they went about in the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah, it was, like I said, the cold turkey method. But like, can I give you another example? Like, yeah. most of our, like... What do, you think, what do you think of the scientist um, studies, which I mentioned about yeah. the one that's in the Lancet? I'm not at all surprised. There have been so... This isn't new news to... No, no, but before they used to say that little drink is good for your heart, stuff like that. I've always known since I was, like, the youngest I can remember that alcohol in fact. is... Well, because it's effectively in doses it's poisonous like yeah but like i kind of think that you know if you take away my choice in the matter like one of the things that i love about life is that i'm faced with a choice so many times of whether to do good or bad yeah. i don't need to be a christian or a muslim to do that you no know, you don't need to, to yeah, yeah, to i totally agree person. you don't need to be yeah. religious to uh, to have a good moral compass yeah, yeah. good moral judgment but then it again boils down to what is good and what is bad based on whose definition of good or yeah. bad see what i mean because everyone ha can have subjective opinions i but actually i really agree with you also yeah like, does it and that's the harm? reason i'm saying we need an authority like in my case i believe that it cannot be human it has to be your creator it has to be god who can who has the ultimate what do you say jurisdiction mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. to decide or to tell you what is good and what is not. I don't agree with your logic. Why? Because you're saying that... Who should decide that according to you? What? Prohibitions and... Because every law yeah, has yeah. certain prohibitions. For example, if you had no, your license, yeah, you cannot just drive the way you want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I feel happy at 80 miles an hour. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah? If the speeding limit is 30, then you go on 30. Or you get fined. Mm. So every law has certain prohibitions. Yeah, which you cannot cross the boundary, I and agree. if you do, you get penalized. But I don't think you saying that for laws to be applicable, there needs to be a creator. Okay, whom would you give because, the jurisdictions to make laws? Can I tell you the story I tell myself? Yeah, go on. Is that religious institution, religion, they... What we're really talking about here is society functioning as best as possible. Yeah. That's what I think we're talking about. It helps if you have a God who's all powerful and you believe in this God because then if you don't do it, you won't get into the afterlife or you won't have a good afterlife. No, no, you won't even have a good life here, we are saying. It's, 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 it's the benefit of both worlds, yeah. this life here after as well. But okay. I don't think you need to have uh, a, you need to subscribe to a, this sort of very strong rules that you have because would you say that no but I'm, whom would you give that that choice because like i said every system needs rules yeah. every system needs the do's and the don'ts yeah, the prohibitions yeah yes. exactly so whom would you give that authority to to make laws which you will be happy with i i think most people would say they give governments authority to make laws and based on your experience do you think the well, how, how has how or, or how have the government performed based on your experience? For example, take the Iraq war. Yeah. Yeah. Majority of the people in no, this no, country no. were against it. We're, we're, Did I they listen to us? About. No, they didn't. We're to, what we're talking about, like in Britain, for example, if, yeah. if you're not, if you're not religious, where's the moral um, force? Where, who's the people we look up to? There isn't anything. No, there is. Because even in Britain, you can't just act no, no, or no, do you, what you want. No, no, you didn't hear me. Like, yeah, sure. what I'm saying is like, yeah. If you're a Muslim in the UK, you talk to God. If you're a Christian in the UK, you have your God. If you're not religious, yeah. you don't have anything to look up to, to hold you to account. Yeah. You just have yourself. No, you society. have your society. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to, for example, if the society, um, they, you, you go by what is, what is acceptable in the society. For no. example, certain societies, it's okay to walk complete nude. Yeah? yeah, they have no problem with that because that's that culture, that's that tradition. Yes, you wouldn't do that in Britain unless you're one of those, what do you say, fringe, you sure? 
fringe, yeah, unless you're of that fringe group, okay, the nudists who come here sometimes, yes, but even they get arrested if they do it without permission of the government. So, like I said, you cannot say that uh, there is no prohibitions in society. And if you're going to start using the government as, a, as an example of being the, the best role model for you or the best authority for you, to whom you would give the power or agree with that they should formulate the I, I, do's and the don'ts in society, yeah, then... I agree. I, agree. That's, yeah. like I said government... So either you'll be, um, what do you say, a complete anarchist who goes against <laughs> the government, or you're going to abide by what the government tells you. No, I, but then you won't agree with everything with what the government tells you either. Okay. I... It's funny, like, I agree with pretty much everything you're saying, but I don't feel that I need to, to like, sign a contract with a god. As I'm just talking about myself, not yeah, yeah. society. I agree. Like, so you don't want to, like, commit to a particular religion, is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, because, like, I know... Like the thing you said was really beautiful, like if you're not harming yourself and yeah. you're not harming other people. This I love, yeah. but you don't need to be a Muslim or a Christian or a, a Buddhist to, to do this because I'm not and this is what I try to do and this is why like, everyone here, like the thing that makes us all human is I think we have an innate sense of that in our hearts. Yeah. So we, the, the humans do have this understanding of non-harm. Yes, and this is, but everyone doesn't abide by that, do they? No. Yes, for, we have for, an ego. For, for example, you know the example of gambling and alcohol, which we talked about. Yeah. Yes, of course, and a person who's drinking alcohol, maybe in moderation, yes, they have this clear understanding that they are not harming themselves or harming others. Yeah. Yes, and they are okay to drink with that. But then, when you have an objective study like that, um, like that study which is published in the Lancet. They tell you that it does harm you. So maybe it is your own biases. It is maybe cognitive dissonance. I don't know what. Makes you think that you're not harming anyone. But in reality, you are. And that is why I'm saying, who decides what is good and who decides what is not? Because everyone is going to have their own subjective understanding. Great question. Yeah, everyone's going to have their own subjective understanding. I'm sure that no alcoholic at any point thought that they're going to become addicted. Yeah. But they ended up in AA, you know? Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Because once you start drinking this intoxicant, then your judgment suffers. For some people. Depends how much you drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? So for some people, the tolerance level is much lower than others. Yes, some people can get drunk. I don't know. I've never drunk in my life. So maybe you might be able to help me. Yourself. I've drunk a lot. Yeah, I know. But some people in your experience, your friends might get drunk by just maybe, I don't know, a pint or two. Mm. Yeah. So everyone has different tolerance. But like I said, their intention might be good that they are not harming anyone but in reality that that can change yes they can end up harming someone yes even though they intended not to but my question is this why put yourself in harm's way you know you mentioned a specific term you said poison yeah. yes yeah. when it came to alcohol so if i were to offer you poison in any quantity would you drink it well you know that is poison would you drink it in any quantity well, poisons in the dose i mean like Water's poison if you drink too much. I see your point. The answer is no. Come on, we, yeah. we both know water is not poison, yeah. and anything in no, no. in excess is is wrong. Where there is water, or anything. Yes, I agree. But we are not talking about exceptions. Such exceptions. This is the extreme level. I'm talking about a small. That's the reason I said in any quantity. Yeah, yeah. So even a minute quantity, and you know it is poison. Your rational understanding, your reasoning, yes, your experience will tell you no. I'm not touching that. Am I right? But people know that alcohol is poison to them. Like the way you said, I always knew it was wrong. It is always harming. Again, it, again, you'll say it's a quantity. You know, we, yeah. we as human beings, we try to justify even drinking poison sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And this is exactly what is happening when people are consuming but alcohol. you could say that, it's a slight side argument, like yeah. alcohol technically is not a poison. It's it a is. substance. Based on, the, have, based on the study, if you have too much of it, no, no, based on the study which I mentioned in Lancet, they said even a small quantity is harmful to you. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's a poison. And you, I could say the same thing about um, what is poison? Something that harms you. To me, that is poison. It's something I actually don't know the definition, but like, I could say that about so many other things, like poorly manufactured food with too many additives and sugar. Remember, I mentioned fats earlier. Remember yeah. I mentioned anything that harms your body, you should avoid. Yeah, yeah. And that goes with everything. So Allah tells us in the Quran to eat something which is wholesome, which is, health, which is healthy, which is 
nutritious, yeah, yeah. you know, which is pure. And this is something which is, do, again... Do, um, do all Christians, all Muslims eat very No, well? they don't. They don't. I mean, speaking of myself, forget about others. I eat unhealthy stuff many times. Yeah, a substance that is capable of causing illness, illness or, or death. death or living. Yeah. Well, my point is that, like, like, do, does Islam have a rule against binge eating of or overeating? Yeah. I, I mentioned the principle earlier, didn't I? Anything that harms your body, you should not do that. Whether it comes to drinking or tattooing or gambling or anything like What's that. What's the rule on Islam and food? I'm curious. Don't eat something which is unhealthy. Anything that harms your body, you shouldn't, you shouldn't consume you, that. If, I Muslim, think people know. People generally Muslim, know. Ah, your question. You say you think people know. So you're relying on their good judgment to eat well. But there's no law no, in no. Islam. No, there is haram and halal. So there are certain things which are prohibited for us. For example, we cannot eat carrion, we cannot drink blood, we cannot eat foods which are sacrificed to idols. Can you those have kind of a things. Domino's pizza? If it's halal, yeah. How many can one Muslim have? Is it prohibited? Oh no, there's no such limit. I but, mean, come on, look. No, there, no, but it's, the, no, no, it's but a fair point. There like, are certain things which you have to employ your common sense. God has given you intellect. Yes, so you're not going to binge eat pizza and then you're going to no, no, but, like but there are, there surely, almost choke yourself. No, no, but surely there are um, there are people who happen to be Muslim who do overeat and who eat two Domino's pizza, and you're saying you, two, maybe two. You need to use your common sense. That, and my point is that yeah. I drink alcohol, but I use my common sense, yeah. and I also try to eat very healthy, and I use my common sense. Yeah. So it's interesting. You should, you but, but that's no, 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 it's not because. There are certain things which you have to employ your principles, isn't it? You cannot all the time expect God to tell you every minute thing. Why not? You're suggesting you should. No, I'm saying with regards to your, as your purpose of life, yes? Then God tells you what will give you success. And there are certain prohibitions in life. So the whole idea of Islam or religion in, in particular, you know, is not to make your life difficult, but to make it more meaningful. And that is what I mean. It's not to govern your life and to uh, observe you uh, like for every minute detail in your life. But at least for the general idea of what, for example, you know, interest is something that uh, affects the poor people a lot. Yes. And there are many countries which have become more poor because now they have to pay more interest for the money that they borrowed in their time of need. Yes. And this is a principle which we see that has harmed entire countries, entire societies have been destroyed because of this. So that's why I'm saying it, it looks at the bigger picture rather than micromanagement. Yeah, yeah. Yes, because the whole idea is not to make your life difficult, to, but to make it more meaningful. Yeah. And this is, where, this is the reason I asked you, what happens if there was indeed life after death? What have you prepared for that? Sure, I don't know. No, like, no, that's no human knows the answer to that question, and that's what I love about life. Like, no one can prove. How many anything. humans have you interviewed? <laughs> well, maybe not enough, but <laughs> yeah. like, because many people will say they know exactly what will happen to them in the afterlife based on their belief, based on their scriptures, based on yeah, what yeah. they were told. No, no, but what I mean, I guess, like, nobody can. Prove. Okay, so you you mean like empirical evidence? Yeah, yeah like, I like actually agree. Scientists, yeah. uh, even like if you take the who's the most intelligent imam on the planet? Even him? Is it you? Yeah, Are you. you no, I'm not. I'm not an imam, and yeah. and even if he was the most intelligent person, the afterlife is indeed something which is we don't have, we have not seen it. But why, so if you're why, if you're seeking empirical evidence, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, so I don't know what kind of proof would you require. I to believe in it. <laughs> I don't think I I don't think about it because yeah. if I just do my thing on this planet yeah. and all the things which I agree with you, like live life, love, do good to yourself, to your neighbours, like mm. if you do that then you know, de facto you're going to enjoy the afterlife. Like for me, I can't prove it. I'm not particularly bothered about it. If I overthink it <laughs> I'm not going to be able to like, you know, Okay, have you, have you heard of the Pascal's Wager? Pascal's Wager, yeah. You if you it. don't know something, you might as well believe it. 
in case it's real. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, so. that's that's a good definition. So imagine this, like you, let's say you don't believe in the afterlife. Yeah. You believe that one day we will die, become dust, the end. Yeah, there's nothing after that. Let's say we both face that situation. Yeah. yeah. So regardless of whether I believe in God or not, I'm going to die one day, you're going to die one day, we both become dust and that's the end of our life, our story, okay? But now if you flip that point and there is indeed an afterlife, there is indeed God going to question you on the day of judgment for what, to account for the life that you lived in this life and because you disobeyed him, because you did not believe in him, you did not worship him, then you will face the consequences for that. I will also face the consequences for that. Okay? But because I have actually prepared for that in this life, then I have not taken as big a risk as you. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So if you're understanding that there is no afterlife, then we both really don't lose out anything. Yes, we both are in the same situation. That is the end of our life and that's it. But if there indeed is life after death, and you will be questioned for and give account for the life that you lived like I said this life is a test then there will be bigger risk for you and you're taking a bigger chance and the consequences you will face is something which you'll have to deal with by yourself because every individual will be then judged by God based on what life they live so you know you you mentioned many times that uh, if we all don't harm anyone if we all live a life which is beneficial okay Look, that is good and well and good. But like I told, I, I told you that because everyone's understanding of good is subjective, then everyone cannot be right. Yes, some people are going to be wrong and some people are going to be right. So we do we take that risk as well? Why should we take that risk? So that's the reason I'm saying we need someone in authority like God to define for us what is what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. You know, many people say, okay, I love myself, I love humanity, I want good for everyone. But the same people will be okay with, for example, abortion. Yeah. Yes? The same people. They say, oh, this fetus, they don't even call it child, you know? Yeah. They say, this fetus doesn't have life. Yes? And I don't want to give it life because the world is a bad place. I don't want to, I'm not ready to bring uh, this child or this fetus into the world. And they are perfectly okay. And I'm talking about vegans like you. Yeah. Yes? Who don't want to kill animals, but they're perfectly okay with abortion. Yeah. So this is what I mean about trying to judge what is good and what is right yeah, yeah, yeah. based on that. Because like I said, everyone at the end of the day are going to have their own personal biases, their own personal reason. So even if something is bad, they try to justify it to themselves that it is okay. Because it's my body, my life, my fetus. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. If um, all the the rules of Islam yeah. were put into British law yeah. and people had to do them, would you be satisfied? I would be okay with that if Sharia was here. Yeah. What's, what's you know many, do you know that many of the British laws are based on Abrahamic faith? On, 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 the, on the Bible actually. Mm. You'll be surprised how many well, of the moral... Right? Yeah, how many of the uh, laws are actually... It started with the... Yeah, because before the church and the state were same, they were one. It is only later on it was separated. Yes? And this is what I mean that even they didn't start from scratch. The British laws actually started from a religious book. Yeah. So a religious text. Does that answer no. your question? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I mean if you're asking if I'll be happy, so if, if, if the British law adopted the Sharia, yeah. then why would I not be happy? Okay. What um what is it that you would object to from the prohibitions that you learned so far? that would make your life as an Englishman difficult. Not drinking, not gambling, no fornication, no adultery. <laughs> I, I think, look, if you had a family, yeah, yeah. and if you, had, if you had a wife and you had children, you know, you would agree with most of the points that I'm raising now. Maybe because you haven't experienced that life, yeah. that then you are now, you're young, you want to enjoy life, and it's, it's normal for you to go about all these things which I consider as vice, as bad, for you, it can be okay. Like. No, no, no. I, I, the majority, like, I agree with, but I think a lot of them are cultural. They're from, they're from. I think it's like 
a difference in culture, like Islamic culture, British, traditionally like Christian Which culture? British culture? If you, if you went to a culture maybe a few hundred years ago in England, yeah. it is completely different. No, no, I think okay. like, I'm talking about like, for example, like alcohol, I know, like Anglo-Saxons, for example, yeah. like, like, I don't know, I... So it's, it's, it's a tradition that you have to, you know, there are many traditions that we have as well. But for example, like, like with um, infidelity, you know, like, I don't think marriage works for everyone. Like, there are people who try and they get divorced. They're just not happy. Like in, in and get divorced then, if they're not happy. There's a, there's a way out. Why should why should you cheat on your wife? Just tell her I want to divorce you, or tell the wife can tell the husband I want to divorce you. That is something that Islam gives you a right to do for both men and women. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to cheat on your wife just because you're unhappy with her, or the wife cheats with the husband just because she's unhappy with the with the husband. I don't think uh, humans are brave enough to make those big choices sometimes. Like, Earlier you mentioned about free will. About, about free will, that you, you should be given the choice yeah, yeah, yeah. to make your decisions. Yeah, yeah. But now you're saying you're not brave, brave enough to be given that choice. Why? No, I don't think, like, with it's, human relationships are so complicated, aren't they? It like, is, yes, it is, indeed. And the, the road to a relationship breaking down, there's, it's not as simple as saying, I want a divorce. Like, no, but human if you're, beings, they, we want everything to be... Um, harmonious yeah and we want to avoid hurting people and we want to avoid conflict I think I don't if you, think human if, beings have enough if anyone cheats with the spouse that would hurt them so, so I don't know you what are you doing is you're saying I don't want to I, a human should not divorce the spouse if they're unhappy but at the same time they shouldn't cheat on them because I think one of them no, is no, going no, to happen. I'm not condoning I'm just explaining like because I'm sure there are, there are I don't know if it's the same in Hindu culture, but I'm sure there are Muslims who, who are adulterous. Yes. Like I said, every single no. sin, every single <laughs> prohibition, it's, no. it's not like just because they are Muslims doesn't mean they, they don't commit those sins or those prohibitions. Because Jews. at the end of the day, God has given us all free will. Yes. Because if he was going to make us into robots, then we would all worship God without disobedience. If we're all free will, why do we need the rules? Because we are weak. Ah. We as human beings are weak. Just like the way you said that it's not, um, it's, it's something like to divorce something, it's not something easy for us. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. Yes? But at the uh, same time, yeah, at the same time, you saved your life twice. <laughs> <laughs> at, at the same time, you, you, you shouldn't cheat on your spouse either because even though you might not uh, be happy with your spouse, that doesn't mean you have the right to cheat on them. Yeah. You agree? And this is something that we find, again, I don't know if you would call it tradition, because I think it does somehow uh, fit into that equation of being traditional. That in, in Britain, you don't get, uh, there's no punishment for adultery. I don't know if there is. I don't think there is. So if you cheat on your wife, she can... There is punishment. No, no, there's punishment in the sense that she now, if she has proof, she can take you to court and get a divorce. But the, but the police won't come and say, I'm going to arrest you because you slept with someone else. See what I mean? Yeah, but we have our own. There's shame, guilt, social ostracism. Yeah, there's this, so is, this is moral. And look, I don't think there's any shame nowadays in fornication. Really? <laughs> in this tradition. Really? I think there's loads. Well, if you go to any university, in fact, it'll be shame if you were a virgin many times. Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? So the tradition has changed. Our culture's changed. Yes. In fact, you'll be laughed at if you were a virgin. If you, by the time you graduate and you're still a virgin, they laugh at you. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So things have changed. When you did know, you lose your virginity? Ah, oh, well, I'll disclose that on the. No, actually, in Islam, we only do it. We only do it when we are married. How old? You me ask me how old you are. I am older than you. No, no. How old? <laughs> how old were you when you? Oh yeah, I was. In, I was in my twenties. Sorry, in my thirties when I got married. So you had, in your 20s, you had tw ten, 10 years of being a hot-blooded male. Look, in our tradition, this is a huge taboo, and I don't mean only Muslims. Amongst the Asians, even the Hindus, even the Buddhists, even, um, in fact, even the atheists in that culture, for extramarital sex is something which is frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something encouraged in the society. Did you find yourself uh, tempted at any point? Of course. As a, 
as a human, as someone who is young, hot Where blooded. did you channel that energy? I'm curious. You know, in Islam, we have something called we, we fast when we. <laughs> So we try, we try is, to fast to be. Can I ask? Like, I'm curious about fasting. Like, what? I'd love to try it. But yeah. what's the what's the purpose of fasting? Like, um, when is it? Because eats just happen, right? Yeah. yeah so, um, do you recommend it for non-Muslims? Yeah, yeah. Why not? You'll 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 get to understand because it's all about controlling your willpower. Yes. And to learn the main the main objective is to get close to God. Which is again against again obedience to God. Yeah, yeah. So even if I am in a secluded place where no one is watching, yes, I could have easily eaten, yes, but I'm not doing it for that purpose. My purpose, like I said in Islam, is to obey God and to worship Him. And for me, if if this is the wisdom in which I'm 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 learning to control my will. So it's not just about eating. It's controlling your tongue. It's controlling your eyesight. Yes, it's controlling your ears. Not to hear bad, not to hear evil, so if not you to see, see evil. like a, a cream bun in the shop, you don't look at it going fast? Well, I can look at it, I mean, but you shouldn't be tempted by it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Control your urge, that's yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds interesting. Yeah, so when I say obviously to lower your gaze, I mean like the opposite yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah. And same thing again with not listening to bad things or not speaking bad things or not swearing. So it, it's all of this. Yes, and by the way, it's. it's um, Controlling your hunger from sunrise to sunset, it's not a big deal. Right. Even even in this country where your fast is like 16 hours long or even more, 17 hours or 18 hours. It's easy. It sounds easy. It, it sounds difficult, but it's easy when you actually do it. Yeah, yeah. I think you should try it one day. So what's the point in doing it if it's easy? No, no, it's not that. It's, it's like I said, it's not, not easy, easy. Like when you're eating normal days and, not, uh, and fasting on, on, uh, during Ramadan, obviously not the same. I mean, my life is more comfortable when I get my lunch and dinner on time. Yeah. yeah? So easy in the sense that it's not something which is impossible or intolerable. Yeah. That's what I meant. Not easy peasy in that sense, yeah? So, yes, and also you, it, it makes you understand what people who don't get food, yes? What they go through, yeah, yeah. what are their uh, challenges, what are their sacrifices. So it makes you understand and this is also the month when the Muslims give the most charity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go and Google it. In Britain, who are the most charitable people? Even though the Muslims are a small percentage, they are the ones who give the most charity yeah, yeah. in Britain. Can you believe that? Proportionally. Proportionally, really? yeah. Well, yeah, of yeah. Kind of, that's... yeah. Yeah, definitely. What, um, what and this you... is something which is encouraged in Ramadan again. I love that. Yeah. I, I could start doing that. Yeah, inshallah, why not? Yeah. Allah give you hidayah, <laughs> which is guidance, yes. So yeah, it's like I said, it's, it's everything that we do, all the do's and the don'ts in Islam, it has certain underlying meaning to it. Yeah, yeah. The prohibitions have a meaning to it. The ones, uh, the, the laws and the commands, like for example, we believe in the five pillars. You know that, I don't know if you know that. So the first is to believe in Allah, to believe in God and His Messenger. Second is to pray five times a day. Yes. And by the way, the prayers don't last many hours. Our prayers, the ritual play, prayers are like, Max 10 minutes. I know. I actually <laughs> love, where I love to spend a lot of time is in mosques. Really? Yeah, I love to go, I wow. relax. I so just, which, you got any favorites? Uh, East London Mosque. No, much um, enough. There's one in... You live around there? I used to go to acting classes there, so I would just go in. And just, I find them so peaceful because of, like a church in yes. England, it's so cold. It's, you have to sit on wood. It's right. it's amazing, but in um, in a mosque, it's it's very peaceful. Everyone's very welcoming. Yeah. Sometimes I go in and people have an agenda and they try and convert me to Islam. But most of the time, like it's just a place of peace, and yes. I love that. Um, there's no distractions. There's no, no. statues or pictures or anything, no, it's because it's it's a place where you're supposed to focus on God, and that's the reason. I think you should go in Ramadan. Yeah, you find to. it more interesting. What's the, what's the best? You get, you get free food there. That should be motivation <laughs> enough. <laughs> what's, what's, uh, what, what's the food that you miss the most when you're fasting? When you're fasting? Well, it's, it's your, uh, the biryani, normal biryani. food. Biryani. The normal food which you have. Lamb biryani is nice. <laughs> He's good saying lamb biryani. I agree with him. <laughs> That's good. So it's, it's, it's your, I mean, look, whatever food you enjoy, you're, you're controlling your nafs, you're controlling yourself from indulging in that. Yeah, yeah. Like even, even water. Yes, I think I miss water the most, yeah, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> because that is something which everyone needs in their daily life, isn't it? 
It's something you can't do without. So it's something that, but because there are communities out there who have to travel like for hours just to get drinking water. So it makes us not only reflect on their life, what they go through. Exactly, yeah. And that enables you to spend more money in charity to these communities who really need the money. You, you learn to give more as yeah, a human being. Yeah, because now you're practically experiencing what they would be experiencing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah? That's, that's kind of why I love my job as an actor, because my yeah. job is to, depends what type, but um, to become another human being. And in order to do that, you need to... Be in their shoes. Yeah. yeah, and that requires a lot of curiosity and questions. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you need to research your character, isn't it? And Obviously. research human nature. Yes. Um, but yeah, um, I think I might continue my run now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've Put your shoes like, on, though. We've chatted for like an hour. <laughs> about what he get in his stomach is value what he get out of it. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, don't make food with our uh, important things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And because you saved me my life twice, <laughs> I give you something to save your life. By the okay. That's really kind. Yeah. So that's that's a free Quran copy and really, some booklets? No, yeah, yeah, it's really kind. I actually, I already have three copies of the Quran. Oh, so, I'm sure. Being in yeah, Islam yeah. the mosque? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. So, so, no problem. So, Keep it. I'll keep, I'll keep this. Yeah, of sure. Course, um, it's very interesting. And yeah, but you're free to ask questions anytime in East London Mosque. Well, what, or are you, what are you looking forward to most about uh, next week in your life? Next week, inshallah, I hope to see you soon again. <laughs> <laughs> we probably will. Yeah. So I mean, look, it's, it's 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 something that we we believe that we have something good and we like to share that. Yeah, and yeah. for us, that is our faith, our religion, our love for God, mm -hmm. and our love for you as a human being that we want to see you with us in paradise after the after this life that is the reason and my love to you yeah that's this is paradise that's what we want well. to share do you agree or not i doubt it very much really if you think this is paradise you haven't seen the real thing have you looked up <laughs> and seen the beautiful I think oh no no see th so this is the beauty of the word beautiful yeah so not this, paradise maybe for me you know what makes me realize that this cannot come by itself this all beauty that you see around you it has a purpose and it also has a cause yes and that is makes us reflect on the creation of God that every time you know Allah, there's a there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah, where Allah says you have to look you have to yeah it's in Surah Fasal yeah yeah beautiful you know I was thinking of this <laughs> so it says yeah when we 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 will show our, them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth so this is what it is, you know, when you look at the horizons, you look at the cosmos, you look at the stars, and you look at the galaxies, you see all that and you, you really wonder that this is a beautiful thing. This is something which is phenomenal, yes, which is amazing. And then you look at yourself and you're also amazing, yes. This is what this is, that Thank these you. are, it tell, says tell that, that these are the signs which are clear from God yeah. for you to reflect upon that have you asked yourself where did all this come from? Yes. For example, everything that we require proof and evidence, isn't it? Empirical evidence for this, empirical evidence for that. Have you asked yourself where did your consciousness come from? Which doesn't have empirical evidence, yeah. yet you believe in it. Yeah, of course. Yeah? yeah? So this is something that science cannot prove through empirical evidence. I agree. Yes? Through observations or in a lab through some research. I, 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 uh, yeah. I have the same. So you, do you believe in the metaphysical? What does that mean? Like your consciousness, which is not physical. Um, not something from the physical world. I'm not sure. I think I'm... Which you can observe, which you can measure, which you can um, record, which you I'm can... Cu I'm curious about it. Yeah. I think the one thing which I love is that I think we're all talking about the same thing, but we just have different names on it based on our culture. No, I think... Because yeah. you call it Allah. Yes. Christians say God. Yeah. The Hindu says. Oh, we say God as well. Oh, you say God. Yeah. But like. But we have a name for God, and uh, this is the difference. But there are many things in Christianity and Islam and Hinduism that that makes us different, because there are many overlapping things. Like in fact, like the way you said, we don't need to be Christian or a Muslim to be a good person. Yeah, yeah. 
because you have acquired certain moral values which you value as being good. Okay? But then if I were to ask you what is this based on, what would you say? Culture, law, like I was raised as a Christian. Like for, yeah. So your values yeah. may be coming from that culture or from that religion or from the remnants of that even. Yeah. Yes? But again, now that you're not a Christian, or I don't know, do you still consider yourself a Christian? No. no. Okay. So because you're not a Christian now, your values are based on your experiences. Yes? And that is something which can, like I said, can be subjective. Can be right or can be wrong. Yeah. Can change even. So today what you might consider as being right, tomorrow you might say, no, hold on. Actually, that was wrong. You know, you can change your mind. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's not grounded in anything. Yeah, yeah. For us, we are consistent because it's grounded in our faith, in our religion, in the well, Quran. You try, you try to be consistent. Think, yeah, yeah, we try because we, we can always go back to, let's say if you have steered away from that, uh, that prohibition, for example. We have gone astray and we have started doing things which is prohibited. Yes? Then you can always go back to the source and check and reassess yourself. Yeah, yeah. You see that what makes, I mean? Yeah, but sense. but someone who's agnostic or atheist, they don't have this what do you say uh, grounding where you can say that this is where my moral compass, this is where I would relate my moral compass to, because it's shifting all the time. It's subjective. You see what I mean? And that is what makes us consistent. And that is the reason I'm saying when we have someone who's overlooking, like giving us, like God did not just create us and say, now go live your life as you want. He gave us guidance and he showed us what is best for us and what is not good for you and not good for your community and not good for mankind in general. Because we see, you know, if you, that list I gave you earlier about alcohol, gambling, fornication, adultery, if you, if you actually look at the effects of all those things, you will see that it has destroyed many lives. It has destroyed many families. It has destroyed many communities. Yes, and this is what I'm saying, that it is not for us to decide what is good and bad. Because remember you, when I asked you, which of this would you say should be prohibited? And you said, I don't think any of those should be prohibited. I think the only exception was interest. Well, now I'm questioning that even, because like, do you, do you own a house? Like, I do, do yeah. Do you have a mortgage? I do. No, I don't actually, I don't have a mortgage. Well, you're very lucky, but like... I'm not lucky, I worked hard for it. Well, so this is something which I haven't told many people, and I want to share with you. The, for me, interest was is such, um, let's say, this prohibition was so bad for me when I, when I actually read about it, when I looked at the impact of it, that the way the banks and the, well, I'm saying capitalists in the sense that because we are in the clutches, whether we like it or not, yeah, yeah we have to pay the taxes which go to, uh, I don't know, many wars, for example, which you and I might not agree with. You see what I mean? So regardless of whether we like it or not, we, and this is the government I was telling you about. So they don't always work in you, for your benefit. They work for their benefit. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Well, of course. Yes. So, Whereas God, on the other hand, is always telling you that what has been prohibited is for your benefit. What has been commanded to you is again for your benefit. You know the five pillars I was going to tell you about? Belief in God, belief in uh, His messenger, belief, uh, praying five times a day, giving zakat, giving charity. Yes, uh, fasting and going for pilgrimage. All this again are the things that you have to do, which, okay. which, which actually builds not only on your moral character, but helps the needy. It helps you build your spiritual character. And all these things, like I said, God is working for your betterment, not your detriment like the governments do. And I'm not saying the government does everything bad. Of course, they have a lot of good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like I... for example, they gave us the facility in Speaker's Corner in a non-Muslim country to preach my religion. And I'm truly grateful for that, you know? And this is what our religion preaches, that when someone does good to you, yes, then you show them your gratitude. You say thank you to them. And you proclaim this, yeah. yes? And the same thing with regards to something which is evil. If something evil you see, then you should not only feel bad in your heart, but you should try to speak out against it. And if you can't do that, uh, no, some, it's the other way around. So first you try to stop it with your, by your, physically, like if somebody's drinking, if you have the authority over them, like your, my child, I can say stop drinking. 
It's not good for you. It's bad. So I can physically stop my child from drinking, like not, not give him money to do that or something like that, you know? There are many ways. Or I can speak to him when he grows older. Because now he's grown older, like maybe your age, I can't beat him. I can't take his uh, pocket money because he's earning his own. Yeah. So I can tell him that's bad for you. Yes, so this is verbally. And the last or the, uh, the last option you have is at least feel bad in your heart. That what bad you're doing is something I will never acknowledge, ne sorry, never accept as being good. Because this is something that has been prohibited by God Almighty Himself. And that's, what, that's the reason I'm saying in Islam, we are, you know, Sharia is a way of life. It's ba basically, even though it's not governing every single minute thing in your life, but the major things, the major task in your life, you are being guided how to do it best. Yes? And this is this is Islam. Many people, based on what they hear on media, they think that chopping of the hands of the thief or, I don't know, capital punishment for a murderer, that is Islam. That is part of the jurisdiction within that, which constitute maybe a small percentage in the Quran. Yes? So if you look at... No, no, no I, th I think it's... 3% of what is in the Quran are the do's and the don'ts yeah, yeah. about the rules, you know, about the commands. 97% of it, it talks about morality. It talks about lessons from history. It talks about uh, you as an individual, how to lead a better life, how to treat your wife, how to treat your children, yeah. how to treat your parents. You know, I should, I should, uh, yeah, I should probably read the Quran. You should, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, like cover to cover, you know. Yeah, but you have should. you read the Bible cover to cover? Uh, I read the, the first, uh, what's called the Old the, Testament. The Old Testament. Oh, the, the Old Testament. Um, but it says God rest, so I leave it. <laughs> um, I have to go because I'm actually cold. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, but I really need, appreciate I need your to your time, to, Max. I need to Is it Max? Yeah, what was your name again? Hashim. Hashim. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, you should yeah. come again. And like I said, if you got any questions, you're free to Did ask. Did you learn anything talking to me or discover anything new? Or not? We always learn something new. What did you learn? Uh, that you are a good human being. Yes. That is the this I got from what you told me. But even though you have three Qurans, you haven't read it. That is a bad thing I learned from you. <laughs> not really. Many people, many Muslims actually don't read the Quran, which they should, you know. But the, the fact that you have actually said that you are going to, you're going to read it now gives me hope. Of course. Okay. And like I said, look, we want good for each other. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And the whole idea is educating each other. Like I said, I'm sure you will share something good if you had with me. And same thing with me. Why would I not share? And knowledge is supposed to be free. At least, well, the general knowledge. Yes. Can I give you one thing? Go on. Okay, so if I read some of the Quran, yeah. I would invite you to climb a tree. Climb a tree? Yeah. I love climbing trees. As long as it's not that high. <laughs> yeah, climb more trees. Um, Why is that good? I just think it, it's amazing. It's connecting with nature. It's really? It's fun. It's adventurous. Why a tree? Not, not stairs? <laughs> uh, because it's... Uh, more challenging. It's challenging. It's yeah. uh, interesting. You never know what's going to happen. Um, no problem. Anyway, thank you. Let me know when you're finished the Quran. What's I'll your, climb a tree for YouTube you. YouTube channel. It's called Dawa Wise. Do you have a card? So um, can, uh, will you post this video on YouTube? Yes. Yes. When? So I'll tell you what. You can you can probably see the spelling on here. Dawa Wise. Dawa Wise. You can take a picture here. You got a phone? No. I don't carry a phone on here. Okay. No. So yeah, if you. If you, if you go to just type speaker's corner Hashim if you remember my name yeah, yeah. you'll get lots of videos on other channels as well will you edit it or will it be the whole it'll be the same we want to edit it the whole thing yeah is that okay with you <laughs> how long has it been guys an hour, two hours. An hour we've talked for an hour and 12 minutes wow wonderful it was time well spent I would say yeah thank you inshallah may we pray that um, Allah gives us both the true guidance yeah to to get the best in this life and the year after. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my prayer for you. I'm, I'm a mind too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Maximilian. Take yeah, care. Very nice to you. Take care. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah. Was that a nice discussion, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll have to check him out. I forgot.